In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the top five things that you should know about the newly released Gemini 3 Flash model when vibe coding. This model was released by Google yesterday and I was able to try it while on stream for the day 104 of vibe coding an app until I make a million dollar series. But in this video, I'm just gonna be breaking down those top five things which range from pricing to the hallucination rate or even just how it stacks up in the benchmarks. But with that being said, uh, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure you do so. And we also have um, inside of BridgeMind, we are the fastest growing vibe coding community on the internet right now with a discord of over 1,700 members. So if you have not already joined our community, check the description down below and make sure that you join. Um, but with that being said, guys, let's get right into the video. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the pricing. So this is probably something that a lot of you guys have already seen already, but I just wanna highlight it because it is important because it's a very, very big part of this model and a reason that would make people People want to use it. So as you can see here, we're on open router and the price per million on the input is 50 cents and the price per million on the output is $3 per million. And then for audio tokens, it's a dollar per million. So when you stack that up against some of the other Frontier models like Gemini 3 Pro, they were able to cut the price in a fourth. So you can see Gemini 3 Pro is $2 and $12 respectively. So in terms of comparing Flash with Pro, it's a fourth of the cost, which is pretty impressive. And we'll talk about that, why why that is a little bit later in the video, but also compared to, you know, Claude Opus, for Point five, you're talking about, you know, literally a tenth of the price on the uh, input. And then, you know, maybe I don't even know what that is. It's $25 compared with $2 or $3. So, you know, just a huge pricing difference. And I think that price is definitely one thing to consider, but you have to take price into context in comparison with some of the other things that we're going to be talking about. But definitely like just straight out of the box. I mean, the pricing is incredible. And when you compare it with GPT 5.2, again, you're looking at pretty much a fourth of the cost. So, this is probably one of the most affordable models now. You can literally compare this model to like GLM 4.6. I mean, um, I forget what even is GLM 4.6 because that is a lot like a lot of reasons that people will use this GLM 4.6 model. I mean, it is comparable. You know, GLM 4.6 V is 30 cents per million on the input and then 90 cents per million on the output. And then, you know, flash $3.50 respectively, but definitely comparable to like some smaller open source model. You know, it's just very impressive that they were able to get the price this low. So, you know, definitely a consideration here. But the thing that I now want to talk about too is just like speed. And what's interesting is that this speed on Open Router, this does change a lot. And yesterday, this was as high as 125 tokens per second. So if you guys don't know what TPS is, it stands for tokens per second. But look at the latency here, 1.08 seconds. And then the throughput here, it's a little bit low. I don't know why it's so low right now. Um, we can probably look at the benchmarks here uh, in terms of the speed. Uh, like here is probably a little bit more of an accurate representation when you actually stack it up against other models. So you know, yesterday on Open Router, this does fluctuate. So, but I did see this get as high as 125 tokens per second. And then when you actually look at the speed on uh, artificialanalysis.ai, which is a great place to look for benchmarks, you can see that it's it beats out GPT 5.2 high by a lot. It beats out Opus 4.5 by a lot. But here it is at 209. Um, so tokens per second on uh, artificial analysis, it's actually saying 209. So I don't know what the current accurate representation of that is, but definitely in terms of speed, obviously this is a very, very fast model. And when you compare it with Pro uh, on artificial analysis, Pro is 127 and then Flash is 209. So you have about, um, I think it's around a 60 to 70% increase in terms of speed. So I'm very impressed with the speed increase. And I think that when you're talking about things like cost and speed, you definitely want to think about them. They're huge considerations, right? Because cost and speed are huge. But one thing that you have to ask is like, hey, you can make a really cheap, fast model, but there's two things that are really important then to add on to that, which is the third and fourth things that we're gonna dive into. So obviously intelligence is incredibly important. So I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit. So just in general, so the artificial analysis intelligence index here, look at how, this stacks up. So here's Gemini 3 Pro, it's 73. And then here's Gemini 3 Flash, it's 71. So one thing that has definitely stuck out to me about this Gemini 3 Flash model is that they were able to make it one fourth cheaper while also speeding it up 
while not losing that much in terms of the intelligence index. And then we can also go to the coding index and it's similar, right? You only lose about three points there in the artificial analysis coding index. So here's Pro, here's Flash. So when you look at, let's go back to Open Router and you say, okay, they were able to cut the price between Pro and Flash in a fourth and they were also able to speed it up by 60 to 70 percent what the real question is is well what's the trade-off of that right if you compare pro to flash in terms of coding intelligence as well as general intelligence what i will say is that they did not lose a lot and we can even check another benchmark which is the lm arena and you can see here on lm arena look at this this is really interesting so gemini 3 pro in Gemini 3 Flash on LM Arena are only 16 points away from each other. So what that tells me is that, hey, not only were they able to cut it in a fourth, but they weren't, they didn't do that at the cost of making the model like basically not very intelligent. So I'm very impressed. I'm like, wow, they did a good job on this because they were able to, they were able to speed it up. They were able to make it cheaper while also not losing a lot. And actually another thing that I want to show you now is another benchmark, which is obviously you know, just the one that Google released. This is from Super Combo Gamer in our uh, BridgeMind Discord community. He's a moderator, very respected. So I appreciate you. Shout out to you. So check this out. So when you are comparing these models here, you know, you can see that Humanity's Last Exam, the ARC AGI, on the ARC AGI 2 leaderboard, Flash 3 was actually able to beat out Gemini 3 Pro. And then in this here, it also beat out Pro. So that's another instance where you're seeing, wow, they were able to do the speed up. They were able to do the cost reduction without losing like a ton of intelligence, which is very, very impressive. So even down here, is there, where's the SWE bench verified? So this is like the biggest um, coding benchmark. And again, another impressive thing is look at this. The SWE bench verified, they were able to get 78% versus 76.2% for Gemini 3 Pro. So again, another instance of them being able to speed it up, reduce the cost without losing a ton of intelligence. So, you know, I look at that, it makes me wonder, I'm like, if you look at the difference between Gemini 2.5, look at this, this is really interesting. So I guess they did it similarly here, but look at the Terminal Bench Verified, you know, they they were 16% off when comparing 2.5 Pro and 2.5 Flash. And then that has, has shrunk a little bit. Now they're only 7% off or a little bit less that's like what 6.6 .6? and then here i mean it's just very impressive here's the t2 bench agentic tool use only 0.5 percent off toolathon again it actually beats it out um so i'm very impressed that they were able to achieve this speed up and achieve this cost reduction without such a uh you know diminishment in uh, returns, diminishing returns there um, from those model changes. So let's go back over here. And another thing that I want to show you guys to consider, which is number four of the things that you guys need to be thinking about is the hallucination rate. So again, this is from Super Combo. So shout out to him. But check this out. Because this is one reason why Gemini models, for me personally, I'm not a massive fan of them. And it's because of this hallucination rate. So this measures how often the model answers incorrectly when it should have refused or admitted to not knowing the answer. So what I will say is that you need to be mindful that Gemini 3 Flash is way up here at 91% on the hallucination rate. That's very, very high. Um, when you look at Gemini 3 Pro, you can see that the uh, it's 88%, which even Gemini 3 Pro is high in hallucination. Whereas, hey, if you look at Claude Opus 4.5, hey, one reason that this is such a great model is because the hallucination rate, I mean, look at this, 58%. So, you know, hallucination is one of the biggest factors when vibe coding and when using AI models. So if you're using a model like Gemini 3 Flash and you know that it has a 91% hallucination, hallucination rate, what you need to consider is, okay, with this hallucination rate, you're going to have to be more specific, more direct, more guiding of your prompts, or you have to understand it will hallucinate, okay? So that's one thing to consider. And yeah, I mean, you look at 88%. And even Gemini 2.5 flash, you can see, hey, that was 88%. So the hallucination rate did go up with Gemini 3 flash. So that's like one drawback that I've personally seen with the model. But I will say 
hey, when you look at the cost reduction, when you look at the speed increase, and then when you also look at the comparisons and the benchmarks between Gemini 3 Pro and Gemini 3 Flash, you're like, wow, um, should I be using Pro or should I be using Flash, right? It's a good, uh, I think they, they really make that a hard to ask question to answer because it's like, hey, um, or a hard to answer question because, hey, they were able to do those things while also not just making a way worse model. I mean, if you were to compare, for example, like some of the other, like take Anthropic, take uh, take OpenAI, and if you're able to compare those companies and say, okay, if you take one of their models, like let's just do this. I mean, can we go over to, let's go to the Artificial Analysis Coding Index and let's just do like, um, let's do, let's throw on GPT-5 high and then let's also throw on like GPT-5 and then I want to find like GPT-5 mini or yeah, let's go. Let's, so let's compare GPT-5 high and GPT-5 mini here. You can see that there is a reduction. Um, not terrible in this case. Um, maybe a better example would be like haiku. Maybe let's compare haiku reasoning. So let's throw haiku reasoning. And this is a good example. Okay. So check this out. So you know, Haiku is Anthropic's like fast model. So I think this is a good example because you look at Opus and Opus is way up here, right? It's 60. And then you look at their fast model and, and this this model is fast and cheap, right? And you're like, wow, well, do you want to use Haiku when it's 17 points off of Opus 4.5? Well, you can kind of draw that into question and say, well, it's I don't I think the price actually probably is worth it to use Opus 4.5 over Haiku because Haiku isn't that smart, right? But what's impressive with what with what Google did is that they were able to do that without losing just a massive amount of intelligence or just being way far off in the benchmark. So, you know, the the fifth thing that I wanted to do is to just look and start to ask yourself um, hey, when you are using Gemini 3 Flash and Gemini 3 Pro, and here's some of the work that it actually did for me yesterday. So for number five, it's like, hey, you guys can now look at um, what it did. This Everything that you're seeing on the UI here has all been done by Gemini 3 Flash. It basically did a complete revamp of the UI for me, and it was able to do all this. And I will say, it's, it was pretty impressive. Um, it was able to create these table components. It was able to handle responsiveness. It was able to um, improve, like, for example, just like this sidebar functionality and the styling of it. And as you guys know, you know, these Gemini models are very good at UI. We don't know why. Um, it just is like, hey, every model has a place in your toolkit. And I think that the Gemini models, at least for me personally, are like kind of like a UI model because the hallucination rate is higher, um, which doesn't make it great for like sensitive backend functionality but I know that a lot of people do have very good success with that backend functionality. I just personally don't. Um, but you know, when you look at the context, Gemini and Google models in general are just absolutely crushing it when it comes to context. Like you look at the 1 million, um, over a million in context, and you compare that to like Opus 4.5, which only has 200,000, and then GPT 5.2, which only has 400,000. These Google models are absolutely crushing it in context. So it's able to process more tokens and it's able to process more things, which yes, that could be uh, leading to a higher hallucination rate. But you know, you look at that and you have to ask yourself, okay, well, if I'm doing like a massive refactor in terms of like, let's say that I want to completely change the styling of this view creator admin portal, um, am I gonna am I gonna use Opus 4.5 for that, which is expensive, slow? Uh, and, uh, and and may not be as good as styling, or am I going to use Gemini 3 Flash for that, which is a relatively cheap model, which has a million in context. And um, honestly, I'm overall very, very impressed by what Google did with this release. It, you know, people were talking about it. I think that Flash models in just these smaller, faster, cheaper models are not super highly anticipated because a lot of the times, you know, people are looking at it like, oh, did this new Frontier model achieve AGIs? You know, that's like a big thing that people ask. So, you know, when they least release these smaller, cheaper, faster models, people don't really hype them up as much as the pro model would because that would be like their most intelligent model. But just what I've found is that I think that this calls into question uh, hey, should you use Gemini 3 Pro for a request or should you use Gemini 3 Flash for a request? I think that Google did a very good job in terms of, I think that you're going to have to ask yourself that question because when you look at the cost and you look at the differences in intelligence, it really does make you wonder, hey, should I, should I spend 4X for only a 2 
a two a score of two increase on the intelligence index, or um, should I spend four x on a three point increase? in the coding index, right? I mean, you have Gemini 3 Flash, which is beating out GPT-5, you know? So it really is incredible. I mean, the rate of change in this industry and everything that's happening, you know, we are on the cutting edge of it. And that's the importance of the BridgeMind community. And that's what we're doing is that, you know, as soon as these models come out, we're immediately applying them to production code. We're immediately integrating them into our workflows. And I will say, I am going to be using Gemini 3 Flash over the coming days and weeks as I work on View Creator more, but I just wanted to make this video basically just to do an in-depth deep dive of, hey, these are the five things that you should know. Um, the cost consideration, the speed consideration, the intelligence consideration, the hallucination rate, which definitely is the biggest drawback of the model, um, is, hey, you know, if you're going to be using Gemini Flash full time, hey, you're going to be dealing with a decent amount of hallucination, right? That is something to consider. I mean, look at this 91. So that's a big thing. But then also just the fifth reason is compare Gemini 3 Flash with Gemini 3 Pro and really ask yourself, do I want to spend 4x for this slightly better intelligence score? Or do I want to save the money? And I think that Google did a really good job with this model in calling that into question. And uh, this model is going to compete very well in the market. So that's my thoughts. We're going to continue to use this on stream. But if you have not already liked and subscribed, make sure you do so and leave a comment down below um, on what your thoughts of the model are. I'm interested in your guys' take. And with that being said, guys, I will see you guys in the future.